Hello, I'm Alice and I'd like to welcome you once again to Whistle Bear, our small family farm in North Northumberland here in the UK. This is our sixth episode of Yarns from the Farm and today we're going to be showing you what's going on at the farm. We've just been shearing. We're also going to be showing you what we've been knitting recently and we're going to have a little recap of all the patterns that we've been knitting in our Yarns Around Northumberland series. Then we're going to do something a little bit exciting. Well, I hope you're going to find it exciting. We are going to share a secret. We have got something brand new coming to Yarndale this year. Yarndale is a special event for us because it is the anniversary of our first day of trading. So we always like to do something a little bit special for Yarndale and this year I hope you're going to agree it's something really special so do keep watching because we will be telling all about it in a little while. So what are we knitting? Well last episode you saw me sadly ripping out my summer that I was knitting in a um, well a mix of our Yevering Bell Double Knit and um, Pure Linen from Midwinter Yarns. If you remember, the, the pattern was lovely, but the, the yarns I'd chosen, they, they weren't giving a nice fabric. It was going to be much too solid and I didn't think it was going to work. So hopefully I will get around to knitting summer in something else. But in the meantime, I was very keen still to knit something in um, our Ginger Ninja Double Knit. I only had three skeins of it left, so I wanted just to find a little vest top or something to, to, to knit in it. Um, and I found this, just on Ravelry. It's the um, Sleeveless Slipover by Church, yes, Church Mouse Classics. And it comes in four different lengths and eight different sizes. But uh, So here are some of them. I'm just doing this little crop top, little crop swing top, very simple but beautifully written pattern, very easy to follow and um, here it is, I, I, haven't, I haven't got a very long way but it's, uh, it's coming along as you can see. Tess meanwhile is having an equally busy summer holiday with all that that entails but she is knitting along on her morning fog. This is by Yona Hitala and it's in Lane Magazine um, number two. She's knitting it in our Yevering Bell four ply and the colour is Willow the Wisp and it's making great progress but there's, there's needles everywhere and I'm a bit worried about dropping it all off. She won't be pleased. Anyway, I'm quite excited. Hopefully by next episode we might have a couple of finished droplets to show you. You never know. So this month, Yarns Around Northumberland is having a holiday. But I did think that I would take the chance to recap all the lovely things that we've been knitting this year. So, our first, first month, we went down to Hadrian's Wall. And we took with us this lovely scarf. It's called Border Ballad. And it was designed by Stella Ackroyd. It's knitted in our Aran Waite Yevering Bell. And I have to say, it's still one of my favourites from the year because it's fun to knit, it, it's, it's lots of garter stitch so you can do it in front of the telly, but just with this pretty lace edge to keep the interest going. So uh, yes, Border Ballad is one of my favourites. We then moved on from Hadrian's Wall and we went to Ford, where we told the story of um, Lady Louisa and um, we introduce you back to front to this pattern it's the Waterford shawl um, again it's by Stella Ackroyd and very unusually for us we produced a multicoloured yarn to knit it out of because really it's just really pretty after Ford we went to St Cuthbert's Cave 
and we introduced you to our cuff but sock yarn. Now this yarn is the same as our Yevering Bell, it's 80% mohair and 20% Wensleydale, but it's got a much higher twist in, and that means it's a much more robust yarn, and so it can take the work of being on a foot. St Cuthbert's Way passes just beyond the farm here, and uh, as he was known for travelling about, we thought he would make an excellent sock yarn. And this pattern is called Meandering Monk in his honour. Next up was our lovely Starlight Snug. Um, this little jersey is in our four ply Yevering Bell and we took it to the College Valley, which is just probably my favourite place here in Northumberland. And we told you the story of wonderful Sheila. Sheila the Border Collie. Um, we called this one Starlight Snug because the College Valley is one of those places where you see huge, huge skies and if you happen to be lucky enough to be there at night there will be more stars than you can conceive of. Anyway, so that was Starlight Snug. After Starlight Snug we went on to Banbra Castle, well Banbra Beach as well. Again, one of the most famous landmarks in Northumberland. And we took along very, very pretty little Marguerite Daisy. Now this features the Daisy pattern from our very popular Daisy scarf and was designed by lovely Kirsty White. Kirsty, some of you will have met because she comes to all the shows and stands the stall with us. But uh, this was one of her first designs and I'm sure you'll agree it is just really pretty. I'm really delighted. Again, it's out of our four ply. It's only a couple of skeins so it's a nice quick knit. Well that's it for Yarns Around Northumberland for this episode. But uh, next episode we'll be back with something new. Hi everybody, um, welcome to the shearing shed. I've been a bit shy about filming in here because this is the first time that we've actually done the shearing ourselves. Usually we get a shearer in and um, he's very good, um, but he shears the sheep, no, the goats, that is, like sheep. So he holds them on the floor and he shears them on the ground, um, which has been great. Goats are sheared like that all over the world. But we decided that we would prefer to see if we can shear the goats standing up because when we shear them just after Christmas they are heavily pregnant at that time, the females anyway, and um, it's important that they're stressed as little as possible. So we thought it might be better if they were able to stand up. So with that in mind um, we have made this shearing table. You probably can't see, it's just a table here that they stand on and at each end there is a rack for their heads. So they put their head on there and we tie them with this bit of rope and then we shear this side and then we turn them around and they put their head there and we shear the other side. Uh, it's been quite a steep learning curve both for the goats and for us but it's going quite well so um, I think it's time to show you. So here we have our first volunteer for the day. This is Daisy and Daisy's got a lovely thick fleece so hopefully this is going to come off beautifully. And I am being helped today by a new goat slave. This is an international goat slave. Her name is Aretha and uh, she's come from Spain because she's interested in keeping Angora goats herself. So we're very grateful for Aretha's help and uh, let's see how we get on with Daisy. Unfortunately, our battery ran out halfway through. This is our next volunteer. This is a little goat called Calamity.
Now, to finish Calamity off, we have got to turn her upside down and do her tummy, just the way you would a sheep. But it's a bit difficult to film that because I've got the camera outside the pen because it's likely to get knocked over. So um, I'll show you an after picture of Calamity when we've done her tummy. So, uh, so here's Calamity after her haircut. Uh, I'm not sure she would pay a great deal of money for the look, but she'll be a lot more comfortable now. And we get all her beautiful mohair for you to knit with. Now, at the beginning of this episode, I promised to tell you about something quite exciting. Well, if it's exciting, it's obviously wool. And here is a little sneaky peek. You can't see it too much, I'm going to push away. That skein of yarn is actually 100% pure kid mohair. And it is the very first yarn that we ever spun here at Whistle or had spun. What it was, when we first started trading, I was very excited about mohair. Mohair has so many amazing properties. It's beautifully soft, it's beautifully warm, it's incredibly lustrous. It takes dye really, really well. It has the highest rub test of all natural fibres. Really, how can you go wrong with this magical fibre? The only thing is, is that the quality of a hand-knitted garment of mohair depends a little bit on the age of the goat that the mohair came from. So, as a general rule of thumb, a young goat will produce very, very soft mohair, whereas an older goat will produce much rougher mohair. Both very soft and coarser mohair do have their uses. Coarser mohair is excellent in weaving, for example, and makes particularly brilliant upholstery fabrics because it's very, very robust. But for knitting yarn, of course, we want it to be nice and soft. I decided an experiment was in order. So I selected a few fleeces from my very, very best young goats, little kids, and I selected a few fleeces from my older, less attractive goats, shall we say. And I sent them off to the lovely people at the Border Mill, where it was spun into two separate yarns. When both the yarns came back, I was delighted because actually they were both beautifully soft and wonderfully shiny and delicious as only mohair can be. However, I, um, I went on to knit a sample of each. With the weaving mohair, I made this Mebius cowl and with the kid mohair, I made this little slouchy beanie. And then I wore them both for a few days just to see how they felt. And actually, as I say, they were both lovely. But the kid mohair, the kid her mohair was really special. It was, it was just like wearing a little cloud on my head. Um, and uh, it convinced me that yes, for the, for the hand knitting yarn, we would put in the very best mohair from our youngest goats. And that's what we've been doing ever since in our Yevering Bell. We are busy making our plans for Yarndale, which is on the 23rd and 24th of September, I think. I hope you're coming along, because we decided as a special treat to celebrate Yarndale, which is an anniversary for us, because Yarndale was our very first day of trading, back on the very first Yarndale. So we always like to do something a little bit special. So this year, we have got 80 skeins only of the beautiful kid mohair and we are going to dye it up into a variety of colours and it will be available at Yarndale and it's a one-off it's never going to be repeated so if you want some very very special 100% kid mohair yarn then hopefully we'll see you there so we are coming to the end of this, our sixth episode of Yarns from the Farm. I hope you've enjoyed seeing the goats being shorn and having a little recap of all our patterns from Yarns Around Northumberland. And I do hope that you're excited as we are about our brand new yarn, Simple Beginnings, 
Remember, it's going to be available at Yarndale and it's quite possible there won't be any left afterwards. So do be sure to get along if you would like some. Also, please do remember you can follow us on Instagram, you can follow us on Facebook, um, you can subscribe to us here on YouTube. Really, really love to get your comments. So if there's anything you'd like to say, suggest, questions you want to ask, please put them in the comments below. In the meantime, we look forward to seeing you in the next episode.